entering service in 2014 alongside the supermaneuverable Su-35 air superiority fighter. The Su-34 Elite Strike Fighter was the less prolific of the two new combat platforms, but could well represent a more significant development for Russia's armed forces. The Su-34 and the Su-35 are derived from the same Su-27 flanker air superiority airframe and serviced since 1985 and have been extensively modernized and modified to fulfill different roles. While the Su-35 follows on from the Su-30 in improving on the capabilities of the original flanker and has been dubbed a 4 plus generation fighter designed primarily for export and to serve the Russian Air Force in the interim until the 5th generation Su-57 attains full operational capability. The Su-34 represents the first of an entirely new generation of Russian strike platforms following on from the 3rd generation Su-22 which served alongside the MiG-23 in the 1970s and the 4th generation Su-24 which accompanied the Su-27 in long-range offensive missions. The Su-34 is designed to fly with Russian 5th generation fighters and will remain the country's foremost strike platform for many decades to come. With this in mind, the aircraft's capabilities have been designed to be truly formidable while the airframe retains significant room for further modernization. While the Russian military is hardly alone in commissioning a strike fighter based on an air superiority platform, with China and the United States, the only other two developers of heavy air superiority aircraft, both commissioning the F-15E and J-16 strike aircraft based on the F-15C and J-11 respectively, the Su-34 represents the most radical modification. Dubbed held up by NATO, the strike fighter is the most visibly different of all flanker variants produced either by China or Russia, with its fuselage uniquely accommodating two pilots and side-by-side -side seats. Such seating eliminates the need for duplicate instruments. Other unique modifications made with a long-range strike role in mind include a pressurization system that allows operation up to 10 kilometers without oxygen masks, and room for the fighter's crew members to stand and move around the cabins features normally found only on long-range bombers which the Su-27 air superiority airframe has been modified to integrate. The Su-34 was based on the Su-27IB design, which also incorporated a similarly unusual cockpit and was developed in the final days of the Soviet Union to replace the Su-24, though the collapse of the USSR led to the cancellation of this program. Upon entering service, the Helldug became the first flanker variant to have been designed for a specialized air-to-ground strike role, with the six other major variants which entered service before at all specializing in air superiority. Unlike the Su-24, the platform retains formidable defensive air-to-air -air combat capabilities which reduce its reliance on a fighter escort initially designed to defend the fighter from the Western Bloc's F-15 heavy fighters and supporting F-16 light platforms deployed in Europe and near Russia's the Far East. This includes a 30mm Gryazev Shipunov GSH-301 autocannon and a pair of air-to-air -air missiles of a number of variants, including the R-27ER with a formidable engagement range of 130 km. While they are not deployed in large numbers, the missiles are among the most lethal and longest ranged in the world, surpassing the 105 km and 75 km engagement ranges of the AIM-120C and B variants deployed by US and European fighters, giving the Su-34 ample protection. Alongside defensive armaments for air-to-air -air combat, the Su-34 also deploys advanced air-to-ground, anti-radiation, and anti-ship munitions as well as highly sophisticated standoff weapons. While the Helldux electronic warfare capabilities are formidable and the aircraft's high maneuverability, speed, and operational altitude provide considerable survivability, the ability to deploy long-range cruise missiles allows the aircraft to better carry out long-range strikes in highly contested theaters where risks from enemy air defenses and fighter jets remain high. 
These standoff capabilities can be key to launching a successful first strike to eliminate enemy air defenses, which can then be followed by further strikes using shorter ranged bombs and missiles once threats to friendly aircraft are neutralized. The Su-34 is capable of deploying a number of advanced cruise missile types, with the KH-65SE and KHSD capable of striking targets at up to 600 kilometers away, well out of range of any air defense platform currently in service, making them ideal for neutralizing such platforms in the early stages of a campaign. Another highly capable cruise missile deployed by the Su-34, the KH-38, was developed exclusively for Russia's next-generation aircraft, including the Su-57, the MiG-35, and the Helduck itself. The self-guided missile can deploy cluster munitions, fragmentation warheads, or armor-piercing warheads and strikes targets at Mach 2.2. Other advanced standoff missiles specialized in anti-ship operations, such as the Mach 3 KH-41, the Mach 3.5C skimming KH-31A, and the 300 km range KH-35U and P-800. For short-ranged engagements in theaters where threats to the aircraft are limited, or where electronic warfare systems and high-altitude flights are deemed sufficient protection, 14 different types of bombs, each specialized in a specific role, can be deployed by overflying hell ducks. Integrating three state-of-the-art electronic countermeasure systems, the Kibini, SAP-14, and SAP-518, provides ample protection against most threats. These systems are key to suppressing radars on the enemy surface-to-air missile systems and fighter jets, and according to their manufacturers can even blind the massive radars carried by AWACS platforms, such as the U.S. Air Force's E-2 Hawkeye and E-3 Sentry. Russian sources claim that electronic warfare systems used by the Su-34 are so capable that jets would appear to simply disappear from enemy radars when these capabilities are activated an invaluable asset occupying only a single hardpoint. Whether electronic warfare will fully live up to its manufacturer's promises remains to be seen, but it should almost certainly be more than capable of countering basic threats to the Hell Duck. Once enemy surface-to-air missile emplacements have been softened with long-range standoff missiles, the Su-34's advanced capabilities and versatility make it perhaps the most advanced strike fighter in service today, with the Chinese J-16 and U.S. Air Force's F-15 EX Eagle II being close contenders. With a combat radius of over 1,100 kilometers, the aircraft is capable of striking deep into enemy territory. Helducks deployed to Syria can strike targets across almost the entire Middle East. At the same time, those based in Russia's Kaliningrad will be well within their limits to neutralize enemy forces across Germany, the Baltic states, Scandinavia, and much of France. Production of the Su-34 notably appears to have been prioritized over the Su-35, with approximately 120 Helducks having entered service as of June 2018, whereas the numbers of the air superiority platform which entered service the same year are only around 70. While the Su-35's performance is comparable to its predecessor the Su-30 and is surpassed by the Su-57, the Su-34's capabilities as a strike fighter remain without compare in the Russian military and no known future platforms are planned which will surpass it. This gives the Helduck arguably a more critical role than the Su-35 for Russia's armed and means it is highly likely to be produced in larger numbers than the air superiority platform, which entered service alongside it. The Helduck's considerably lower production cost than the supermaneuverable air superiority fighter is also a likely factor. The Russian Air Force is expected to deploy at least 300 of the strike fighters by 2025, and while the older Su-24 will continue to be modernized, it is likely to be gradually phased out of frontline service. Twelve Su-34 strike fighters have been deployed to Syria for combat operations, and unlike the Su-24 and Su-25, which are also specialized in an air-to-ground role, the Helducks have suffered no losses.
The aircraft has performed exceptionally during the Syrian conflict and modifications have been applied based on combat experience.